Due to their fear of being alone, and general fear of deep space, Xenos use massive cargo ships to have nice big crews, with plenty of individuals to support one another. These large ships were juicy targets for pirates and raiders, because capturing a single ship could yield a great haul, and they had poor protection after centuries of peace. Weapons were only for highly trained professionals, on highly specialised ships designed for a single purpose when it came to galactic regulations. The concept of armed merchants was bizarre, and it also meant the Crustacans attempting to raid the human supply lines had never faced the creature that is the convoy. Big Bertha grunted, waiting at the front of the line of the assembling trucker convoy. The Longhorns had just been refitted at the Navy shipyards, now sporting two turrets on the top, and one on the left and right. The front of the cargo bay had now ammo storage right next to the two new bunks they'd installed. Humans didn't mind sleeping a few feet from military grade munitions. Or their bellies might be exposed, that's what formations were for. Bertha had been assigned convoy lead, and as she waited for the others to get set up, she picked up her mic. Breaker, breaker, listen up. This is Mother Trucker Convoy Lead. Y'all sorry sons bitches better keep your eyes open. We're heading on down the big road to Twin Town and go report a smokies. This ain't no double nickel run to the chicken coop. This is the real shit. You get hit, you keep moving. Guy next to you gets hit, you keep moving. This convoy ain't stopping for shit. Not even an all-you-can-eat buffet at the local whorehouse. She finished with, as the FTR procs band, filled with hoots and hollers. Now, sound off! Green goat ready to roll! Fat Freddy set to run! Flying Snorlax set and ready! Evil Pony angry and prepped! Flying Pig good to squeal! Wild Stallion ready to ride! Who the fuck is that guy? Wild Stallion? Christ, who let the new kid play with the big boys? Fuck you guys, I'm Wild Stallion! Bertha bought on her mic. Shut it, you lot. Rookie, you don't get a name till your first run is over. So, you're rookie. There was grumbling on the mic for a minute. Keep the sound off going. Who's back there with the rookie? Black Rose, howdy, boys. Shit, really? What lucky fuck has to stare at your ass? Quest to bring up the rear. I tell you, I'm more interested in the rookie. There was laughter over the prox band, aside from the rook who grumbled. Last not least, Paco Taco. Gotta give you some diversity. Hey, I'm plenty diverse, said Black Rose. Yeah, you take the shocker but flipped upside down. There was laughter at that. Let's make sure this is a short ride. I don't know. You mind riding the rook's ass for a while? said Steer, to more laughter, as the rookie spoke up. You stay away from my ass, dammit. Stay away, Rook. Time to get the convoy moving, ordered Mother Trucker. They were leaving a supply depot loaded with munitions, food, and other assorted war supplies heading to a frontline base on the planet Gemini, so named because it orbited a binary star system. It made for some interesting weather on the planet, but the system was in a strategic location, since right now the war was limited to humans, Libertonians and Crustacans, the humans hadn't shut off the FTL gates in enemy territory. They wanted to save that little trick till they were ready to make the most of it. The convoy wouldn't be attacked while in FTL, but they had to drop out of the lane they were using, cross a patch of space for a dead system and get onto another route. That was the most likely time they'd get hit. The Longhorns were spaced out, with one row above and one below, their unprotected undersides facing one another, so they could cover all the approaches with their turrets. As they got rolling on down the FTL lane, the prox man was full of their chatter, bullshitting about this or that to pass the time. But eight hours into their run, they had to drop out of the lane and head through the dead system. Alright children, keep your formation while we drive through the woods and we'll be just fine. Most of the truckers had been through military service before, but only a few of them had actually seen combat. Even so, they followed Mother Trucker, 
the gunners in their turrets, slowly scanning the space around them. It was another three hours to cross the system, and it was quiet since they didn't want anyone to be distracted with banter. The system had three planets, a hot Jupiter and two barren rocks with nothing interesting, all orbiting a yellow star. They were passing by the second barren rock, when the rookie burst out on the prox band. Smokies, nine o'clock! The turret swiveled and began to belch fire. Humanity might be fighting among the stars with Xenos, and travelling as spaceships, and at times moving faster than light. But a 50 cow was still a mean weapon, and when you link two into a turret and let loose it made for quite the show, especially when you had a whole convoy worth. The tracer rounds arced out as they began to fire on the approaching crab ships. They were warships and fighters, made for war, tested in battle against other Xenos. The pilots were veterans of dozens of combat flights. They'd expected to utterly destroy the merchant vessels. The Longhorn convoy lit them up. Crustacan ships exploded and swerved away from the massive hail of bullets, swarming over the Longhorns, only to be brought into the sights of the gunners on the other side. The truckers took hits, as energy weapons slammed into their hulls, burning away pieces of hull, but instead of the explosive decompression the crabs expected, they just kept on trucking. In preparation, they had vented the atmosphere and each trucker was wearing a pressure suit. The crates were all sealed and stowed, and the gravity held so the gunners got a better view of space, but they weren't faced by the holes in their hulls. As the gravity on the ships held the shell casings, rained into the main hold, the sound of the bright metal bouncing on the floor of the cargo hold muted in the lack of atmosphere. The gunners might have to wade through a sea of spent casings if this held up. Finally, the crabs broke, running back to the far side of the rock they'd hid behind. This is Mother Trucker, we all still trucking? She heard a chorus of various ways to say yes. Keep frosty. We ain't out of this yet. As they kept moving, they were passing the hot Jupiter when the rook called out again. Two o'clock. The gunners turned and the firing began again. Paco broke the comm silence. Is a shame Big Bomber can't have fun with us. He loved this. Who's Big Bomber? The rook asked as the rest of the convoy all shouted out on the prox band at the same time. Billy Bob Space Trucker! They were standing at the cargo port on the edge of the forest. The Xenos wanted to keep the cargo and freight as far away from the big pretty cities as possible, so it was way out in the boonies. That suited the Archangels just fine. Billy Bob had met Sergeants Wyatt and Ivanovich, but since Carl had put her helmet back on, they all looked identical to him anyway. The cargo port stretched out in front of them, simply massive in scale. This was an important Xeno world after all, they got all sorts of shipments every day. That meant there were a large number of Atlas transports scattered about, being loaded up from various large warehouses. The port is walled off, and they have a tower every so often, but it looks like security is pretty loose. We can kill those gate guards and blow through the gate, or knock down that patch of wall there. Not sure what's in the building behind it, but I doubt we'll have much resistance from the Xenos inside. Then we face a bit more resistance around that central building, most likely. Even so, I'm confident we can get through whatever they've got, and take that atlas that's been unloaded and get out of here. But, of course, that's only after Cal and Ivan scale that tower on the southern end and destroy that comm tower before we start. Billy Bob listened to Sergeant White lay out the plan, as Captain Crunch nodded. Sounds like a solid plan, Sergeant. What about just walking in there? Billy Bob asked, as Emily and the Archangels looked back at him. Then he pointed at the gatehouse leading into the Waldorf port. Those space poodles were incredibly easy to bullshit. How do you think I got that super nice parking at the museum? What are you proposing? The Captain asked. Simple. You just bullshit your way into the port and bullshit your way into an atlas. Don't tell me you guys have never bullshit your way into something like that. The Archangel stared at him. Really? How do you guys normally get into secure places you aren't supposed to go? 
They stared at him. Rad, you kill everyone. Stupid question. You really think you can just walk in there? They know what you look like, Captain Crunch said. Yeah, but they don't realize that there's a special detachment of fish cups searching the woods now, do they? There's a what? A special detachment of fish cups. You're in power suits. They look like the shit they wear. Why not? They gotta know people are searching the planet. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Which one of you can pilot the Longhorn? Ivanovich rose his hand. I can pilot ship. Dude, just speak Russian. We have translators, Billy Bob said. No, I will speak English. Well, suit yourself. Just send it to Harbor and follow me and the others. We'll walk up to the gate and talk our way through. They stared at him. Have none of you honestly bullshit before? It's all about confidence and just talking through it. Don't get too deep into some lies, but don't be too generic. Talk as if you're supposed to be there and this is perfectly normal. I am rather surprised to say this, but maybe this would be better if we let you take one of our suits. Captain Crunch said. I don't know anything about power suits. You get in them, turn them on, and start walking around. You sync the external speaker to your implant so you can tell it to broadcast or not, and that's about all you need to know. There's very rigorous training for us, obviously, but if you're just walking around, you should be okay. Try not to pick anything up, or touch anything, because you're way stronger in one than you are normally. Billy Bob thought it over. Well, you don't have a spare. Which one would I take? The Archangels turned and looked around at each other. No one volunteered, but it was really up to the captain anyway. There was a slow sigh before Crunch spoke up again. You can have mine. My main purpose is to lead these sad sacks anyway, which I can do from the Longhorn. But if you die in my suit and make a mess of it, I'm not going to be happy with you. Promise, I'll do my best not to die in your suit. Don't do your best. Get it done. Sounds just like my mother before a baseball game. Jesus. Back in high school, our team was playing our long-time rivals to be state champs. This pain in the ass Chuck Jackson had been knocking balls over the fence against me all year. Wait, as in Chuck Jackson from the Yankees? More like the Bankies, but yes, that Chuck. At the start of the series, my mom told me if we lost, I couldn't come home. I'm not sure if she meant that night or ever, but I didn't want to find out either way. Anyway, he came up to the plate the first time. And you know what I did? You struck him out, ventured Carl. Fuck no. I hit him in the ankle. It was a great pitch. Looked like it just broke wrong and he didn't get out of the way. Bam! Right into his ankle on his first at bat. He was out of the whole series after that, and no one was the wiser since I didn't do that sort of thing normally, and I got it out to a full count before I did it. There were some grumbles, but eh. Anyway, long story short, gave up a base but won the series in four. He probably could have played, but he wasn't willing to risk his college scholarship over a high school game, even if it was to be state champs. So, what was the point of this story again? The captain asked. Just saying that when I care enough about something, I always get the job done. Well, then and I'm a state champ. Cause you play dirty. Sergeant Samson grunted. Yeah, cause I'm a winner. Samson scoffed, but Crunch cut him off. Dirty pitching or not, I still expect you to not die in my damn suit. Understand, Lieutenant? Yes, sir, Billy Bob muttered. They began to pull back from the tree line then, so they could go back to the Longhorn and get ready. They had already cleaned up the campsite, and with his plan, the beauty was that they could just walk up onto the front gate, so all he needed to do was get Crunch's suit. Emily's power suit was face down in the back of the cargo bay, along with Stomper. Billy Bob had made sure to play with the space fox for a bit before putting him back in there. He was standing next to Captain Crunch, when the Archangel pointed to a crate. Why do you have a crate with paper and rainbow rocks in it? Billy Bob began to laugh at that, shaking his head. Those are turds. What? Stamper. He shits rainbow turds. You've got to be kidding me. 
How else did you think they got in there? I honestly have no idea. I have noticed that keeps happening on this mission. You find the Voyager. You have some special space fog spread that shits rainbow turds. You have a functioning MP-44. I'm not sure anything would surprise me at this point. Oh, that reminds me, I need to get the golden record. He walked over to Emily's power suit, and tried to see if he can open the hatch from outside, but then noticed a crate next to it that he hadn't put there. Opening it up, he found the record inside and smiled, singing it back up before lifting it, and carrying it down to stow away, closer to the front. Then he stopped, as he saw a woman standing next to the power suit. She was blonde, with her hair pulled back very tight in a tight bun, very athletic and toned from the looks of it. She was wearing her dress uniform for some reason, and it took him a moment to notice the same tag and rank taps. Cat and Crunch? You are expecting a short fat man with a moustache? Kana? Yes, I'm Captain Crunch. Her voice was very different outside of the suit. You guys all wear your dress uniforms and those things? No. He waited for more, but none came, so he just nodded. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think I'll fear. Is one size fits all? Did you think the lowest bidder would make customized suits? I guess I should have known better. Billy Bob stowed the crate and then walked to the back of the suit, and looked at the opening hatch up around the shoulders. Inside, he could see some padding, and in general, it looked more than big enough. But as he looked at the small hatch around the shoulders, he looked back at her. How do I get in? You grab the shoulders and jump up. Slide your feet in, then you should slide right into place. He stared at her while she remembered that he was still limping around and sore all over, and had recently had his arm cut off. Right. It took them a few minutes, but they made a platform out of a few crates, and he climbed onto it as she held it in place. He sat on the edge of the top one and carefully lowered himself down a bit, before pushing off and dropping down. Since he wasn't really used to the steep angle of the drop, he leaned back too far and cursed as he tried to grab the suit while she stopped him from falling out backwards. He was sort of stuck, half in, half out, arms up. Is this something that happens in training a lot? Not really, no. Thanks, don't save my pride or nothing. He wriggled as she kept his back up until he could scoot down a bit and then slide the rest of the way in. Once he was in the padding adjusted around him, and the hatch was shut by the captain. The screen lit up in front of him as a bunch of data spiked in his implant. Uh, do I want to run the tutorial? God no, cancel. Uh, you ran the tutorial, didn't you? I figured escaping out would clear it up, it defaulted to on. God damn it, try cancelling it. It's installing some update. How the fuck would it know how to do that? I just got out of it. How's it need an update? We're on a hostile planet. It's not supposed to do that. Uh, since I'm a new user, the settings were sent to default, apparently. Cancel it. Uh, as a new user, I do not have admin access. Please contact a CS admin. Jesus Christ. How long on the update? It's alternating between five minutes and three days. There was a heavy sigh from outside the suit, as Captain Crunch activated her secondary comm. Boys, the suit is making him run the tutorial and he can't get out of it. Take it easy, this might be a few hours. Wait, I think... Hey, did you guys know that putting admin into the password works? There was a pause for a moment. The highest tech power suits that humanity has made. The current pinnacle of our military design and engineering process. The very things that give us the ability to fight on unprecedented levels, full of all kinds of military intel and implants of war, and they didn't check to see if you could use admin to get full access. The captain behind him sighed out. You said you wouldn't be surprised by anything else on this mission. I'm not. I'm really not surprised at all. It's perfectly typical. I just had to take a moment to let that sink in before my anger and disappointment could coalesce. Cancel the update. But I still have to run through the tutorial. Uh, you might want to back up. 
I don't know where this thing is going to take me. Crunch backed away as he very stiffly turned around, walking as if he were doing the robot out of the back of his longhorn. Once he was outside, he could see the other archangel standing around and watching him. I've never run the tutorial. I wonder what it's like. It's awful. Uh, it wants me to jump. Wait! Crunch couldn't warn him before he leapt forward, smacking into a tree, shaking the trunk as he fell to the ground on his back. Ow! You're way stronger than you're supposed to be, and you're on a low-grav planet. You'll need to think about these things. He booked around on his back like a turtle, until he could roll over enough to get on his side and push himself up. You'll get less stiff as you get used to it. Yeah, yeah, I need to just figure out how to dance in this. If I could dance, then I'd just start figuring it out. Let's see, what's this? Hello? It still has some of the captain's music on here. What's this? Workout mix? The other archangel saw the captain get a deer in the headlights look for a minute, before she started pounding on the back of the suit. Billy Bob, you stop right there! Don't you dare! There's a direct order, Lieutenant. Uh, sorry, sir. There's some trouble with the audio equipment. Did you say you start playing music? Emily couldn't figure it out as the song started, and the other archangels began to laugh, while Billy Bob started to gyrate his hips and move his arms in a strange dance. She tried to listen to the lyrics to see if that gave her any clue, but she had no idea what a mock arena had to do with anything. Captain Crunch was glaring at her soldiers as he danced, however. And so ends another chapter in the adventures of Billy Bob, Space Trucker.